Hello guys and welcome to my new video and this is a good one. We'll be looking at the Ventia Miss Weaver Monk Guide because this is the highest HPS heal in the game right now. This build is relatively new. It's been around for quite a while but I finally got the time to sit down to look at the stat priority, to look at gear, to look at talents, both in Mythicless and Raids, to look at the playstyle and how to optimize it and this is the video on how to play. The best HPS healer. Let's go. So first and foremost, why play a Ventier Misweaver Monk? What are the advantages and disadvantages? We'll be looking at some of the real play information, the most popular builds that are out there. We'll also use questionably epic to determine the stat priority and some of the gearing options. So what is the main advantage of Ventier Misweaver Monk? And this is the real play information using sub creation. Again, I love using this website because it uses real play information. A lot of the times, what is the most popular usually equates to being the best. The most popular legendary build for Mr. Monk in raid situations in Sanctum of Domination at this given point is Sinister Teachings. And this is your requirement for this build. You need this legendary in order to optimize your Fallen Order uptime. And the uptime is pretty interesting. And again, you can look at some of the most popular conduits and soul binds. You can see Ventia, Theodar being very popular. You can see the builds here. We'll talk about all of this and conduits a little bit later on, but I just want to showcase that. In raids, it's the most popular build right now for Misweaver Monks. And if we go to Mythic Plus, it's not as clear cut right now. Sinister Teachings are coming up. You can see here being the second most popular build. And I think it's going to climb and climb and climb. In my personal opinion, if you're looking at logs, I don't think the Ventier build is as potent in Mythic Plus as it is in raids. Because in raids, it is absolutely insanely good. But don't get me wrong. You can run Ventir and the Ventir specific Covenant Legendary both in Mythic Plus and Raids and have an amazing time in terms of the pure throughput, the DPS, the viability. It is an overall great build. This is the HPS shards for healers in Sanctum Elimination. Again, Mythic 75 percentile. So if you're playing a class relatively decently, you're probably going to see some sort of numbers like this. Mistweaver is absolutely dominating and a lot of these are going to be Ventir. It's just insane. You are going to be topping meters or, or you should be topping meters every single fight as a misweaver monk especially Vente misweaver monk the amount of pure hps you can achieve is just nuts i don't know if blizzard is gonna nerf this because i think misweavers deserve to kind of be at the top for a little bit if you're looking for a healer that's the best hps in basically all content out there there is no question that Mistweaver, especially Ventir, is going to be your main choice. So now that you've decided to check out Ventir Mistweaver Monk, you swap to Ventir, what are the next steps? You need to get to 48 Renown in order to get Sinister Teachings or learn this Legendary. Once you get the Renown, you're going to get the Legendary. And again, where are you going to craft the Legendary? This is not actually as clear code option as you might think. You can craft it on Wrists or Ring. And the difference between the two is not that big, with Ring probably being the more popular option. But generally speaking, if you have, for example, max item level 252 rings, which have crit on them, go and craft the legendary on your wrists. Or, for example, maybe you're getting the wrist from Terragru, Mythic Terragru, the first boss in Sanctum Domination, or buying it because there is a BOE wrist, craft the legendary on Ring. I personally, myself, have crafted legendary on the Ring, with crit versatility stats on them. There's nothing wrong with going with crit haste, but I went with crit verse, just my personal preference, and this is the beginning of your journey. So this is the stat priority and gearing for your Ventia Mistweaver Monk, and it's going to be one of those things that you need to utilize because crit is going to be extremely high in terms of your stat priority, and uh, how do you use it? So this is questionably epic, I've been using this, and honestly, I recommend this to any healer approaching World of Warcraft and optimizing your healer setup because this is the best tool that you can use, and it's going to give you stat priority, it's going to optimize your gear, everything's there, you just need to know how to use it, and recently it has added a Ventir Misweaver module. So you're going to see a similar screen to what I have right now. You'll probably have to add a character. I've already done this. I've already done a video for a basic setup. So I'm assuming you kind of know how to use this already. So you're going to have your Misweaver Monk. You're going to go to Top Gear. You're going to select Playstyle. And you're going to select Sinister Teachings. And that's it. That's basically it. All of a sudden, everything is going to optimize for your Ventir Misweaver Monk. So... What is your stat priority? Right click, and this is very important. Right click on your Mistweaver. And you're going to see the default generic stat priority for a Ventir Mistweaver Monk. And you can see here crit is 0 
the higher the number, the better the stat. You can see intellect is one. So that is like, you know, the main stat. Intellect is still the king, but crit is, is getting closer. And after that, you're going to have haste and versatility, which are basically equal to each other. So you can either go crit verse, crit haste, and you're going to have a good time. Maybe a good mix or balance of those stats. Master is a little bit lower. And leech is quite big, but you cannot kind of gear for leech. Leech is just basically a random lottery, so I'm not even going to include this. Leech is very strong in race situations, it loses value in mythicals. And this is why adding crit rings, crit jewelry, adding crit enchants and things like that are going to provide a substantial increase to your HPS because, again, more crits, bigger reduction on your fallen order cooldown. And crit by general is also one of your best stats for a monk, regardless whether you're going to be venti or not so how do i find upgrades or how do i find the best gear let's go to our game for a second so all you need is a very small add-on called simulation craft and this is just basically going to again press enter you press forward slash simc and now you get this kind of a string you control c to copy it and that's it with this string you'll be able to optimize the gear that you have currently equipped and the gear that you have in your bags. Let's go to Questionably Epic Live. And once you're in Questionably Epic Live, you have to select your uh, monk, and you have to, at the top right-hand corner, you'll see SimC, and you just control V to paste all of the text that you copied, and all of a sudden, if you go to top gear, you see, oh, hey, all of the gear that I have currently equipped, you can see the little yellow uh, border around that is the currently equipped items and the items that I have in my bags. Maybe this helm is going to be better. Maybe this uh, this neck is going to be better. Uh, maybe this cloak is going to be better. Again, you can select items that you feel could be better. Or you're not sure about. You can select all of the rings. Maybe I have some rings that are going to be um, better than what I have equipped. And then at the bottom, you'll see a go, a go icon. And you can click go. And you can see in this case, the currently equipped gear that I have is the best equipped gear that I could possibly have. So I don't have to make any changes, which is great because, again, I optimize my character using this tool. Keep in mind, in the next couple of weeks, Questionary Epic is going to add some substantial quality of life improvements in terms of how you add domination gear and domination sockets and determine which sockets to use. So right now, if you want to add a domination item, you can either add it by SimC and it's going to straight up pick up, oh, hey, you're using a shard here. Or if you want to add it manually, you might go to something like uh, Gear Compare and you add helm socket and then you have to add the item and then you have to add the actual socket that you're going to be using in the next couple of weeks you're going to have simplified version of this where you have a list of shards and you can select them and then it's going to pick out an optimal setup which i feel is going to be insanely nice and that is a feature that's happening in the next couple of weeks so i'm looking forward to test that out but now let's find some of the gear upgrades for our vent and mystery monk which values again i talked about this which values crit quite heavily Let's go to Upgrade Finder. And in Upgrade Finder, we're going to, again, Sinister Teachings, Space Time is selected. You don't have to do anything about this. Let's say we're just going to do heroic content. Because we're not ready for Mythic yet, but we're doing 14, 15 keys, which are going to give you a 236 item level. Actually, let's go to, if you're running Mythic Plus situations, you can use Vala to upgrade it. And you can click Go. And all of a sudden, again, I'm not going to, for example, I'm not going to be raiding that much. I just want to do Mythic Plus. I can click on the Mythic Plus section here. And all of a sudden, okay. There is a decent amount of upgrades I can get here. There is Unbound Changing is always a good addition. Keep in mind, you saw my neck. My neck is a blue neck that I bought from Auction House and I added Crit Verse to it, which again is an insane way to get that, get that Crit stat. But before I got that neck, Spires of Ascension, running Azure or getting this neck, Crit Versatility would be the best way to, would be the best neck for me to get. Now, if I added a socket piece of this neck it would be an upgrade so this is one of the best ways in my opinion i use this tool all the time crit is going to be a very or it is going to be your best secondary stat it's still not going to beat out intellect but there's a very likelihood chance that if you are running vente mystery monk that you might be dropping item levels on your rings you might be dropping item levels on your neck in order to get that critical strike so keep that in mind, guys. Don't get rid of all of your lower item level rings or jewelry because with this build, crit has priority in terms of secondary stats. So just a very general overview of the playstyle. And this is where we're going to look at what the legendary does and Fallen Order ability achieves as well. So Fallen Order, it has a 3-minute cooldown and it lasts for 24 seconds. Now, what the legendary does is that Fallen Order summons one additional crane, adept for 24 seconds. While you have an active adept, your abilities that critically hit critical hit so that involves damage and healing 
reduces the cooldown of all your order by five seconds. So all of a sudden you have the exact same play style that maybe you've seen Boon of the Senate for the Sim Priest, where you have your, you know, Kirin specific legendary, you have your Mikiniko straight, and all of a sudden the three minute cooldown becomes one minute cooldown. You have the exact same thing happening here, but achieved in a different way. So the most important part to read in this is that with the legendary, Fallen Order Summons additional crane, while you have an active adept, so you can only get this critical or this reduction in cooldown while you have Fallen Order enabled. But in order to achieve a lot of critical strikes, you will need to run Refreshing Jade Wind. That's going to be your bread and butter, because Refreshing Jade Wind is going to, again, heal people around you in 10 yards. There is a weak word that I use that tells me how many people need to be healed at a given point, but generally speaking, using Refreshing Jade Wind on cooldown during your Fallen Order is going to provide a good amount of critical strike because you're going to be surrounded by, you know, friendly targets. So this is why stacking critical strike using Refreshing Jade Wind in raid situations when surrounded by allies within the window of Fallen Order buff, you will see a great reduction in this ability. It's not uncommon to see a 3 minute cooldown go down to around 1 minute, possibly even lower depending on how much crit you have. To activate Fallen Order, use a critical strike abilities like Refreshing Jade Wind, go into your allies, and after your Fallen Order 24 second buff wears off, the cooldown on Fallen Order might be something like 40 seconds or so. Maybe even less depending on how much crit you have. The uptime is pretty insane. One of the most common questions that I also get asked is Fist Weaving going to die because I'm no longer using Ancient Things of the Monastery which gives me a direct incentive to deal damage that is going to heal. Now I'm using Fallen Order which has no direct DPS kind of incentive. 99% of the time, the most popular Mistweaver builds, both in Mythiclus and Raid, are going to be using Rising Mist. It is extremely efficient and it encourages you to use Rising Sun Kick. Rising Sun Kick can get reset with Black Elk Kicks because of Teachings of the Monastery kind of passive that you have as a mod. Fist Weaving is always going to be encouraged, and if you're a Mistweaver who likes this melee DPS build, you're going to be running the same kind of rotation, regardless if you're going to be using Fallen Order, regardless if you're going to be using Ancient Things to the Monastery, because you should be dealing damage as a healer, especially in this healer DPS oriented meta. This is probably going to be your most popular talent build in raid situations. You're going to be running Rising Mist, you're going to be running Refreshing Jade Wind. These are, this is very, very important because of this, you're going to get Yulon. And Yulon, and this is something, it's almost like a disclaimer that I'm going to put out. Yulon is extremely mana intensive and it almost requires an innovate. In order to have the most optimal Yulon usage, you want to kind of save innovate and you want to also save manatee for it because you'll be using a lot of enveloping mists. So with this build, because you have to pick Refreshing Jade Wind because of the critical strike that this is going to provide during your Fallen Order windows, you're going to have to use Yulon, which in turn can be really optimized if you have a Boomkin. One Boomkin who can give you Innovate on that 3 minute cooldown. If you don't have an Innovate, you might have to be a bit more careful about how you use Yulon. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like Yulon when you don't have a balanced druid to help you out. But this is going to be the most popular build. You're going to be using Misraps. Misraps is extremely important. It increases the melting mist duration by 1 second and its healing bonus by 10%. Why is this so important? I'm going to showcase. I'm going to use my Fallen Order right now just to see what it looks like. You use Fallen Order and you can see it here, 23 seconds, and you can see there's these Adepts here. They're healing this guy here with Suiting Mist. They're also going to drop Enveloping Mist on this guy when they need extra healing. So you can you can also see, you can see the Enveloping Mist being stacking up there. And I'm using Spinning Crank King just to showcase the cooldown reduction. Now, I started a little bit too late, so it's not going to be really that great. If we look at the logs after... The Fallen Order has expired and expired right now, so I'm going to reset combat. And this is after the combat has been reset. If I go to healing, uh, don't, don't look at the numbers because these are dummies from the old world and the amount of healing that I'm doing is insane. But just look at the breakdown of Fallen Order. You have a thing called Fallen Monk, Fallen Monk, and they do Enveloping Mist and they do uh, Suiting Mist. This Enveloping Mist healing and the duration of the Enveloping Mist is buffed by Mist Wraps. So... If you are using this legendary, you should, in all content, pick Misraps, both in Mythiclus and Raids, if you're using this legendary. And now let's go to the Mythiclus version, and honestly, running this legendary, running Ventir in Mythiclus situations is very viable, is very optimal. A lot of times, Fallen Order abilities are going to be one of my top heals in the Mythiclus dungeon, which is going to trivialize certain healing intensive weeks. It also provides additional DPS. The DPS isn't crazy, but 
the way that you're going to play with Fallen Order in Mythicus is going to be a little bit different because you can't use Refreshing Jade Wind to get those juicy crits during your Fallen Order windows. Instead, you're going to be using Spinning Crane Kick on these, how do I say, bigger trash pack pulls to get the critical strike to reduce the Fallen Order cooldown. So as an example, we're going to go to the Training Domus and we have Fallen Order available. I'm just going to use Fallen Order. I'm going to go straight into Spinning Crane Kick. Now, Spinning Crane Kick, the crits here are going to reduce the cooldown of Fallen Order. You can see here at the bottom, you should be able to see it. You can see it's two minutes cooldown right now. I have 12 second duration of time. Again, I could have had HOTS already running. You can see my Fallen Order monks are suiting, misting, and enveloping, misting other people around me. 4, 3, 2. We have, it's nearly over, and the cooldown of it is around 40 seconds. So, this is the kind of uptime that I can achieve in mythical situations if I'm using Spinning Crane King during a a more bigger trash pack pulse. Again, I feel that it's not going to work with every dungeon. You might have to hold on to it. You might not have bigger trash pack pulse. And if you cannot use Fallen Order, or you have to use Fallen Order on like a boss fight, the cooldown reduction is going to be substantially lower. So this is why I feel this build, while it works in Mythic Plus quite well, I don't think it is as strong as it is in raid situations where your refreshing Jade Wind can be ticking on everybody at all times, especially in large group situations. So because this is the Mythic Plus section, we're going to talk about the most popular talents. And the talents in Mythic Plus is a big difference. You're not going to be running refreshing Jade Wind. You're going to be running Red Crane a lot of times. This is probably the most popular build for Misfear Monks went here in Mythic Plus situations because, again, Misraps also going to buff your Fallen Order and Developing Mist. But now, you're running Red Crane. Red Crane, during Red Crane, your Enveloping Mists are going to proc Enveloping Bread. Enveloping Bread is pretty insane. But, will Fallen Order, because Fallen Order Adepts also cast Enveloping Mist, will those Enveloping Mists proc Enveloping Bread as well? The answer is no. It won't do it. I know it would be absolutely overpowered, but they don't. Unfortunately, they do not. So you won't get Enveloping Bread from... The enveloping miss casts from fallen order adept unfortunately but you can still get it from casting your own enveloping mists so just a very quick summary for your venti missing monk you need to be venti you need to have a legendary to make this build work in race situations you're going to be running refreshing jade wind you're going to be using this pretty much on cooldown during your again during your fallen order windows during fallen order buff you need to crit as much as possible in order to reduce its cooldown to around a minute, possibly even more depending on your crit. In mythical situations, you're not going to be using Refreshing Jade Wind, you're probably going to be using Red Crane, but in this case situation, in mythical, you're going to be replacing Refreshing Jade Wind during your Fallen Order windows with Spinning Crane Kick with big AoE trash packs. Because of Spinning Crane Kick, you're going to be getting a lot of critical strikes and you're most likely going to be reducing your Fallen Order to a similar amount, but because in Mythicus you might not be able to get these kind of trash packs every, you know, so often, you might not always have this cooldown reduction that you can get in raid situations. But that's not a problem. You'll be running Misraps because Misraps are going to be buffing your Fallen Order enveloping mists. Very, very important. And if you're running Red Crane, combining Red Crane with Fallen Order, your Fallen Order enveloping mists are not going to be proccing enveloping bread. Unfortunate, but I guess it would be even more overpowered if it did. And this is my Soulbinds and Conduit setup for Vente Mistweaver, based on the most popular builds that are available out there, both for Mythicus and Raids. This is for Raids. It's very important to note that with Theodar, Token of Appreciation, this is insane. This can do anywhere from 5 to 10% of your total healing. It is actually an insane trait to pick up. You're going to have triple potency conjures you need to have and this is your fallen order covenant specific conduit fallen order monks deal 50 percent more damage and healing this is pretty much mandatory and you need to pick it up and it's very 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 strong you're gonna pick up rising sun revival again this is your revival trade this is insanely strong again in raid situations you need this you need token of appreciation and the last one is going to be resplendent mist now in terms of endurance and finesse conduits you can have a lot of options but generally speaking grounding bread is going to be something that you're going to pick up this is insanely strong especially in mythical situations where you're going to be casting vivifies on yourself a lot more like this is insane in terms of value for an endurance conduit especially mythical outside of that you're probably going to be picking up fortifying ingredients Fortifying Brew grants you a shield equal to a certain amount of your maximum HP. Again, a shield gives you more effective HP to survive abilities that might one-shot you, especially if you're undergeared. And the last one, honestly, Condensed Atmosphere. I had nothing else left, and I basically picked it here. And this is going to be probably 
the most popular Ventir Mistweaver build in raid situations. Now let's go to Mythic Plus. And the way I have it set it up is that I only need to click this and I'm in my Mythic Plus setup. Now there's a lot of more choices here I feel but this is to some extent one of the most popular builds because you want to get Wasteland Propriety. It's very similar to what your Holy Paladin is running by the way. Wasteland Propriety, Fallen Order signals the start of tea time granting 6% versatility to you and this is the important part. 3% versatility to up to 4 nearby allies. So you're buffing everyone else. Fallen Order, the cooldown, is going to be lowered substantially if you're using Spinning Crane Kick and large Trash Packs. Meaning that you're going to be providing a lot of versatility to your party members, which is going to give extra DPS and bosses and trash are going to fall quicker. Now, you're losing double or triple potency conduit, so you're losing one potency conduit. In this case, i am decided to lose Rising Sun Revival. Now, there has been few builds where they replace Resplendent Mist for maybe Rising Sun Revival. Like, maybe you feel you need that mass dispel potential. Like it's example in bursting or something along those lines. Maybe you feel like you need the additional AoE healing and you could replace Resplendent Mist with Rising Sun Revival. Or you could even try out Jade Bond. To find the true potential of Jade Bond can be really difficult. And honestly, I don't know the true potential of it at this given point. So this build right now is a pretty popular build in Mythic Plus, And this is a pretty popular build in Raid. Am I saying these are the best? I think the Mythic Plus version can have a lot of different changes. And if you do want to change a certain conduit, I would change Resplendent Mist for something else possibly, depending on the situation or depending on the key or an affix. And I know this video was extremely long, but I hope you enjoyed this guide. And if you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I do think the Venti Mistweaver is extremely fun. It's one of the most fun healers in my opinion, at this moment. And the HPS, especially in raid situations, it is nuts. It is so fun, especially if you can get that innovate and optimize your Yulon and optimize your enveloping mists during Yulon. You are going to see some insane HPS. Let me know how you feel about this video. Let me know how you feel about this build. Are you going to try it out? Leave a comment below and I'll read all of it.